Onivia, League of Legends highlights. We had our eyes on that one this entire time here in draft. It is going to be left through, and Doran will pilot her here into the Twisted Fate. The early... Uh, Doran just kind of uh, swimming around. Gold card is going to connect, and that's going to deny any sort of harassment. As Peanut, bit of a drive-by. Uh, just constantly putting the pressure on. Speaking of which, uh, Peanut is now going to find Ona. Gets a full combo here as Ona is just trying to get himself out. Emperor's Divide, and they push the rel away. The crash down is going to come through as Shattering Strike is a fair bit of value, but it's not going to get out of the Void Rush. That is First Blood going over to the Rek'Sai. side. Yeah, it looks like he's just scared that perhaps all that. And the defense there of the dive top side was pretty successful. Zeka did not have his ult. He does now. Faker, no package available here as uh, Peanut does slow Faker down. Ona is going to be here. Flash out from uh, Faker, but there's the audacious charge from Peanut. They get the knockoff, and Faker is going to be taken down. And Emperor's Divide immediately follows. Ona this time is going to be able to flash and will take the land. Uh, Life will be able to take the prize of a Drake unless Ona is able to do something about it. They do get a bit flash. of information as he gets on over. There's going to be the steal, but it might be a sacrifice of his life as well. Magnus Storm comes in and he takes the lantern! And Kerry is going to save his jungler. And T1 are just so good at this, man. So not going to be pushing this one down very quickly. Ezeka does have ult flash. Yeah, he does. And he also has Viper coming down here towards his bottom side as Empress Divide is going to be avoided. Ona was taking up the turret for such a long time, though. And is just going to fall down. Viper just great positioning here. Gumiushi Carrier just a little bit late to the party. Yeah, uh, owner a bit of a, a miss on this one. Well, so Mega Deathrock, can he get flashed there? As that is a lot of respect given. And now Destiny coming on through. Zayas will find the gold card, and that is a very comfortable kill. Snare should be able to keep Viper safe, but that is still so much damage done, and the acceleration of the Twisted Fate is well and truly continued. Yeah, now they're going to try to counter drop this Rift Herald here in mid, and they should be able to get a decent amount of damage on this turret, see how long they can stick around. It is a Nautilus and a Shin Zhao here trying to push this down, but with the minions, they should be able to get it very low. And T1 are just saying, well, we have a lot, much longer push. We have five Void Grubs. Yeah, that is going to be a death sentence on to uh, Doran as well, who is going to get flayed back. Viper will find his way back here. They should be able to keep this turret alive, but it is not exactly very healthy. No, definitely not. Neither the mid turret that does survive here or that inner there on the bottom side. All right, Peanut taking a lot of damage here from Faker, who is almost towards his items. Uh, Peanut decided to go in, is very aggressive, as now they're just looking to try and lock down this turret. They will be able to do so. Zeka able to uh, throw it at a Drake for the moment. Now Carrier moving on in, Hook going to connect onto Doran. Not exactly an optimal target, but he's going to be denied the Barrow. Does have to Blast Cone to get himself out of the way here. Let's see whether Ono is just going to be able to utilize the Rel to lock this one down. It is going to be secured, but can they win the team fight? Hook going to connect onto Peanut as Faker delivers a package to the back line. Viper shields himself up, though, has to flash over the package to avoid the damage. Hook is going to be there onto Peanut, though, and he should go down. Empress Divide lands on almost everyone, and there goes the Jinx, but Viper falls immediately afterwards, and now the damage is just Zeka. Zayas zones in on it, and that will be the lockdown of the Emperor. And there is the damage gone. No one else able to offer anything back. And Delight, yeah, he's tanky. He lasts a little bit longer, but he will still be going down. And T1 wiped the fight. Yeah, T1's wiped way up here. So I'm like, these sports are just saying, we have five, you have four. And at the moment, it is three. Hook going to connect as Ona's Magnus Storm is fantastic. He's lasting for so incredibly long and gets his way out as well. But still, Doran able to lock that one down. Zayas is now in the front line. This is dangerous. But the Jinx is now going to get excited. That is the second kill as the front line has been wiped out. And now Doran, the last realizing that it's probably not worth it to fight over a, uh, a third Ocean Drake if there is Faker with a package right there. He has Spear of Sojourn completed as well. Uh, Corky is starting to come. Ona gets into the pit. It's not even a 50-50 as they take down the tunnel. There's the hook. They're going to go for the re-engage. They find the knockoff, but he's just so incredibly tanky. Gumiushi going to get jumped on here as Doran going to try to take him down. They are going to be able to do so. There is two kills to start this one off. And finally, Hamalife Esports have found a team fight. They'll get the knockoff. Empress Divide onto both damage dealers. Still, it's a double kill for Faker, but it shouldn't be a one fight here for T1 as Doran, Zekker, and Peanut are just going to try and take him down. There's the knockup. Wind becomes lightning indeed, and there is the takedown onto the Corky. Finally, Humble Life Esports win a fight. They give it to Zekker. I know, so I think this Baron is just gone.
nothing that Carrier can do about it other than watch. He will be uh, spared, at least at this moment. The Baron is going to be taken down, so Hummel... Back. Back. Not there, Destiny yeah. has been popped here, so Hanwha, their positioning 100% known, and there is the Drake. They're going to start the fight as well as Owner is going to have to crash his way down and out of there. Super Mega Deathrocket this time not going to work out as the tunnel out from Doran. He is still at full health. He can play that front line if they would like him to. And he's just tunneling around, does manage to Rocket eat as well. This could be a game deciding fight. Yeah, T1 already starting this one up as Delight in position. Flame Chompers go down, Hook gonna go wide there. As Zekka now finally going to join the fight. The Hook is gonna connect, that's on the a flashless Twisted Fate as well. Still, he's able to kite this one out, the flash forward from Peanut and Doran's able to lock that one down. But now the package is absolutely gigantic. Still Doran just shrugs it off. They are able to take down Peanut, but Emperor's Divide connects. And that is the wipeout for Hanwha Life. They are looking to try and end this game. 9,600 in damage for, for Faker on the Corky. The package is big, but it's not big enough. And it looks like it might be the end of his winning streak here on said champion as Hanwha Life with a huge team fight win here in Doran. So consistently guaranteeing these kills on Guma, even with the Lanterns, even when the Jinx is over the wall. With that turn from Faker, it is not enough. Oh my god, the intensity of this game, but still, I'm alive now, knocking on the front door of T1. These death timers are not exactly the longest, but the Nexus turrets are going down. Still, Owner standing his ground, trying to take control. They'll take both Nexus turrets, but they're not able to end the game. And now, yes. Destiny has been propped. Teleport to come in here as Delight is in a lot of trouble at this point. He is going to be sacrificed. And now Fake is teleported over. Is this the count to win now for T1 as the gold card? He's going to connect. Doran is not able to get out of this one. And that's Faker locking that one down. Remember, guys, the Baron is still up. Yeah, the Baron is up. can just walk on over. And also, so is the Ocean Soul here on ending the game. Vision here to see Zekka trying to threaten that mid push. The Nexus is open and naked, but it doesn't matter. You only have over the wall to kill Guma is so massive there without that play. I think T1 again have a much better chance with all that damage coming through, but in, they do ultimately win it and fail to push. Key wards for the teleport still. Zekka and Doran don't have theirs up and available. As with five members of Harmon Life Esports here, it is very difficult to defend. And now Magnus Storm is going to get that engage on through. Peanut taking so much damage now, able to use Owner to try and taxi out, but the double knockoff is fantastic from Doran. They take down the Thresh and the Rel, and now Fumiyushi is exposed. He's going to get snared, and now the game is finally over. Harmon Life Esports, it looked dicey after that push failed, but this time around, the Nexus will go down. And on the red side, Harmalife Esports will take game. Comes over, but it's really difficult to deal with Counter-Strike uh, when ganks do come towards the top side. And Owner playing River Nautilus at this point. Owner going to start off the bubs. I'm pretty sure Delight knows what's going on. Peanut is going to dive out as the hook comes out of nowhere. Thanks for that one, Jonah Strong, for the jump scares. They do find the permafrost onto Owner. The flashes come forward, and there is First Blood going to the Sejuani. The punishment and the long con by Delight. Like that. As Kumushi coming on over to grab some souls in the mid lane. Peanut just stealing away the Gromp here towards the top side of the map. 50% health. And now Zayas is potentially in trouble. Finds a gold card onto Peanut, who will throw out the ulti and eventually flashes his way out. Still, Owner is able to lock down the kill. Now, Doran, he's going to get taken down as well. The gold card is going to connect, and he's not going to be able to get the follow up. And T1, they punish hard. Doran's typing, got a plate worth uh, in the chat <laughs> oh, right man. now. As Doran is here on this top side, doesn't have his teleport available. The Twisted Fate's still on top side of the map as well as Ona going to safeguard his way in, and he's just going to steal it away. It's highway robbery from this Lee Sin. He's even able to interrupt Peanut, who does get the permafrost. Viper now looking for an opportunity, but the kickback is too good. Empress Divide also fantastic, and the burst fire is there. Carrier going to get taken down into his zombie form, and he's going to find no value. And Wolf, are we certifying it? I'm going to certify it. I've got my stamp out right here, and it's slamming it down on the table. And this is exactly what I'm fight. Is yeah, you got the dragon, but you priced yourself into this extended fight. And Viper is just sitting here full health going, yeah, okay, you can go on me. You're taking that Q into me. Okay. Uh, Senna can't do anything here, and Corky can't do anything either. Whoa.
There's a lot of people here in this top lane. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's all right. We're going to see whether Peanut can actually try and get some sort of gank working as uh, in goes Doran, finds a counter strike onto two. Q connect here, but the dredge line, the depth charge, absolutely fantastic here from Delight. Still, there is the package delivered right underneath the turret. No one's gone down just yet, though. Another hook is going to connect as they're trying to juggle, and there is the kill going over to Delight. Zekka's coming up. Yeah, this is starting to get scary. These health bars are relatively low, but Zekka is kind of here by himself. On Hanwalai's side, and I think opting into this and losing another fight to this area is just opting into losing the second game. Yeah, owner is on vision, remember, as Zekka is just going to deliver him to the rest of Home Alive, and Viper is now on a killing spree. It's a disaster for T1. Yeah, that's a third kill for the Zeri, and that's, that means no dragon contest here whatsoever. They can get the Herald in exchange as they do start moving towards the gankers as he is now just going to shove this wave towards the turret. This has been, like, the most unfettered Zeri ever. Yeah. Viper, he's just coming to team fight. Right now, looking to come on over. There are a lot of people towards the top side of the map, as you can see. Zekka has teleport, so if they want to continue to push this, they are going to have to be very cautious. This. He can both get this outer turret bottom side and make an impact here top side. There's that TP. Oh, yeah, and now the flash forward from Delight. He'll find the depth charge onto Gumiyushi, and this center is in a lot of trouble. Zekka going to fly on over. Does find the Arise and then the Sand Soldiers will finish the job. Doran actually getting the kill. Like, we just know that this guy is always just going to be good in a team fight. Could we be looking at exactly what I was saying before, where it's T1 falling down 0 2? As this might mean no, as Dawning Shadow is going to fly on over as well. And there goes the Azir. Now, Doran, that is an unfortunate teleport. If ever I've seen one, as Carrier with a celebratory faceplant into the wall. Harrier also flashing there. Very strange exchange, as he will be able to get uh, Doran's teleport in his flash as well, but... Okay, Hook is going to connect here, as there's the ulti out from Viper. Faker now in a whole lot of trouble as the Piercing Darkness comes in, but the flash forward from Viper says no. And now the Mega Cone from Gumiushi still. Viper able to get these burst fires over, just dashes over the wall. There's the Extendo Beam, a good sidestep from Gumiyushi still. That's, uh, that's going to put some fear in him. Aside here, now that he's shadowed, now that they've pushed the Santa away, he should be able to get this turret as well. We'll put Hanwha two turrets up on T1. A fed Zero is Faker gets caught here as well by Delight, who just feels like he is everywhere, man. It's a global Nautilus. He's just involved in every single fight that T1 around. Well, they'll start this one up. It is dangerous, and full vision was given over to T1. Of course, you can still press that destiny button if you would like to. And so there they go. Um, I have already backed away from this one. There is a kick forward. Good Arctic Assault there, but Doran's still going down so incredibly low. Delight also having to flash away. There's a Flash Empress Divide, but it's whipped entirely from Zekker, and T1 will punish immediately. Now Viper still trying to get damage down, able to buffer that cold wave. Now, Hollow Life, they're not just going to go quietly to that good night. They've got a fed Zeri. Oh, yeah. They're going to contest. These extender beams are scary. There is the hook in, but he's not as tanky as he was last game. And Delight will just immediately get punished. Enot has flash. Yeah, they want to try and get on in here. Doran's at full health now as Viper has pressed that ultimate button. This is kind of a Zeri fight, and he's going to take out Zayas first. Into the pit they go, but the Baron is still going to go over to T1. So still their advantage, and Zekka will take Into the fights they know they have guaranteed Pryo on to avoid getting package at whatsoever. Whoa, there's another flash forward here as Empress Divide is going to be used just to get Zayas out of here. The ulti comes through from Viper. He does do a lot of damage, but T1, the Phalanx is being put together. And they're going nonetheless. Thorin's going to teleport top here to try to trade turrets as T1 used the last 20 seconds of this Baron. The push me. 44 minute, uh, seconds prior to this Baron. Ooh, as Peanut. She could be in trouble. The smite to break the shield does manage to find the ulti. And boom goes the Dynamite. Six and zero now for Viper. And Humble Life Esports, they can have control. Turn his attention back towards this Baron one more time as well. He's found his way in behind enemy lines. Good zoning smash there from Carrier, but they're losing control quickly as Viper is level 16. Yeah, package is going to be delivered just to Peanut here as it was probably wearing off. And now Delight going to answer with that death charge. The flash over from Viper, the Assassin Zeri! And Owner is going to kick him away, but it's not going to be anything that's actually able to help out here. Is now Carrier taking damage. Owner will be taken down. There goes the Jungler, and T1 are falling apart. Somehow that Glacial Prison connects onto Carrier. And now five versus three. Hummelite Esports will start off the Baron. Another hook is going to connect. Zekka! And Zekka is going to make up.
for that ultimate from earlier. Peanut finds the Arctic Assault Flash, and Zayus will be taken down. His opposite number picking up the double, and there's the Baron for Hamalife. On Will Life, Esports gonna take this Baron and with it control over the map for the foreseeable future, if not for the rest of this game. Caria, very tanky. See if he can get his way out of this one. Yeah, don't it's a think portal so. combat. Here on the top side of the map, Doran is going to break that vow. And Kerry is running the wrong direction. He is likely going to die here. His ult is coming up. will almost be the ace, uh, but it's not actually going to be. That was just clean play from Viper once again. He's taken this gold and being so efficient with it, so massive. 8 0 and 3. He's got his scimitar done. I don't know if the Zeri dies ever. Yeah, he is an absolute monster. He definitely hasn't died so far this game. As there is a knock up on a Peanut, and Peanut does not care about it whatsoever. 6,000 gold the lead for Hummel Life Esports. They denied the soul. That is not all that relevant because it's Chemtech Hook just barely going to whiff there from Delight. As you can see, Zayas just trying to push out these waves so that Hummel Life cannot get more than just this oh, bottom. Nautilus Zeri, is that going to work? But the gameplay around it was absolutely fantastic. You, you can see here by the damage dealt that playing around Viper is their bread and butter. They're going to look for the engage on Carrier. He's very tanky, but his turret is now missing. He's now going to look for a desperation engage, and it should not work out here as he's going to be going down into zombie form. Surely? Surely he is? Never mind, he's not. He's just incredibly tanky. The hook, the kick, it's going to work out here, but the disengage has to come through. And Hummel Here across T1's jungle, Viper hit 18 before Doran did. Yeah. It's uh, it's kind of ridiculous. He is our uh, highest level in the game as Delight is going to find Zayus. In goes Doran as well, and they will be able to lock him down. Gumiyushi, he just pops like a balloon, but still, Delight taking a lot of damage. The package delivered. Ona looks for the opportunity. Empress Divide avoided, but he can't avoid the prison. And now Faker has to flash away. He does manage to take down the Jax. The extended beam avoided as well, but he's still moving the wrong direction. I don't think it's going to be enough to save them. It's only three kills, TP. and Faker might be able to keep himself alive, but Peanut is going to come on over. He flashes. He doesn't <laughs> manage to lock him down. As you mentioned, the teleport. This game, the game state is so against them here. They're trying to turn this around with package, but this desperation is just simply oh. not going to work. Not enough damage here. Delight is just oh, Carrier. Yeah. And Hanwha Life Esports just put Doran in the top lane, continue to push this. And this is checkmate. Yeah, well, there's the control ward. It goes down. Zayas is going to get knocked up, and there is nothing he could do about it. Viper, 9 0 and 4. Weaver in, in dominoes falling over. It all started on that poor dragon take from T1, where Owner got the smite steal, but Zeri got two kills, and up Viper in so many ways set up Doran in so many ways. And now the Baron is going to be the siege to end here. I, I see no world in which T1 defend this. And look at how quickly everything goes down. Viper with six items is no joke. Doran going to help take down this inhibitor turret as well. He's a damage threat on top of it all. And inhibs all just going to be removed. It is textbook play here from Armor Life Esports. And T1, their map has all of a sudden gotten extraordinarily small. Zonia's for Zekka, Zonia's for Doran. There's no way to mess this up if you play it carefully in Hanwha R. Yep, they're doing the very best. Carrier has a gigantic health bar, but he just can't really do anything else to stop Hamalife Life Esports from uh, getting on in here, making things happen. Guardian Angel done for Viper, so they're going to have to kill him twice in this fight if they are actually going to be able to hold on to this game. But you can see there are multiple Siege minions still bearing down on the base. And now Doran goes in. He finds the Counter-Strike on Zayas. And now Zekka gets in there. The explosion of damage is now they're in range of Viper. And that means that it's Hanwha Life Esports in range of winning the series with match point now available. From Hanwha Life Esports. I, now, I think obviously Blades. it's probably going to be the more lethality based version. So very deadly in the early stages of the game is now Peanut has been found by Ona. Let's do a fair bit of work, but you can see Peanut looking for a little bit of a turnaround. When becomes Lightning does come in, Azeka will have the inside track here on this particular battle. Blastcone comes on over, there's the flash forward, and Ona locks down First Blood. Immediately it is answered, and somehow it's in fact Peanut that locks down the kill. All and there's considered. See here, Carrier is hit by a rain of arrows, and I was just checking Peanut. to see the summoner spells is okay. Peanuts coming on over. There's the flash forward. His carrier does so much damage. Peanuts burning down. It's a one for one once again, but I don't think Peanut was expecting to die so instantly. Didn't have flash from the previous play, that replay we just watched. Then well, he is very dangerous 
with Spirit Rush available. There is an Equalizer, and Zekka, he's down to 100 now underneath this turret. He, this is so dangerous. As now Karia looks to come in, he is definitely... Never mind! The Fates Call comes on down, Viper is burning! And Karia is able to lock that one down. Zekka was free food there under the turret, and that's going to be lapped up by Faker. And finally, they get a kill advantage. Yeah, T1 with a huge swing of gold here after this play. And, I mean, the key of all of this is the Weaver's Wall just stops a little bit too short. owner? Yeah, there's another hook. It's going to connect there. They don't have a lot of damage. No, he should be fine. He's got ult, and he's got Counter-Strike. He has flash. These Ren stacks as owner should be able to deal with this. Is now Peanut going to get dove on, has to flash, get out of the way of the rumble as soon as that first Harpoon lands, especially with the fact that he has his Zork Boots now completed. This is there, you know, if he had a level 11 Weaver's Wall or if he's able to get there a little bit faster, maybe they make something of it as Viper. Yep, he's going to have to walk down the red carpet. There's a flash in as once again they've got Fate's Call, and so he can freely do this. The hook is going to go wide as owner is once again back, and the Leap Strike will lock down the kill. And now Delight is trying to grab one back. We'll be able to do so as Carrier will help grab some plate gold. Weaver's Wall going to come in as well as Zekka. He came from the other direction. That's absolutely insane. As now Peanut diving on in. Wind becomes lightning. He's going to do a fair bit of work there. But Carrier still able to create the distance to get himself out. And T1 not going to find the charm as Wind Becomes Lightning comes through once again. Peanut closes the gap as Threaded Volley. Faker does have to use that charge. And they will be able to make it out to safety. Still, Zeka able to push them out. Wilker, yeah. in this oh case. Oh, dear. Peanut well, stayed. Yeah, Peanut, he's still here. Gumi, she's at full health. They're still going to go for this dive. Threaded Volley is fantastic. There's the seismic shove, and Peanut, he wasn't going to die to that one. They'll take the plate, and they'll take the kill. And Viper gets a plate mid. No answer from Faker. Oh. To play these fights out. As yeah. whenever we peel up to here, I'm always like, somebody hide in the brush, we have all vision Whoa. on. Speaking of hiding, uh, Charm is going to connect onto Peanut here, but the Weaver's Wall is going to come on down. Faker does get out of the way of the rocks, but he's just going to get taken out. The Flash was already used, and he's just going to die. And now we're taxiing over to Gumiyushi, who's also taking massive damage. Peanut locks that one down. It's a double as the bottom lane evaporates, and Ona is trying to get something back. Does take down the Varus, but the Threaded Volleys are chasing the Jacks through. Still the Empowered One not going to connect as Peanut flashing in um um okay i'm not sure about that one but the threaded volley will save him and home of life esports find a big team fight yeah it and the w empowered q damage from viper just tearing apart this bottom lane but then peanut and this is yeah this is weird um yes. but thankfully zeka was there uh was almost a leap strike in power and uh it was just doomed as okay hook gonna connect on to Carrier once again. Chains of Corruption pretty powerful as well as they're now just right in the back of this pit. Peanut going to be taken down first though as Zeka comes on in finally. Carrier keeping himself alive for so long but will finally go down. And it's a two for one again here for Harmer Life Esports. But Faker closing in. Kumiyushi still here as well. Charm going to land and Faker just pops like a balloon. Delight has been a god today and that's not going to end in this game. He has the Titan's Wrath and Zeus Nothing he can do 1v4. The light is just insane! The guy just knows how much he can do. It was going to be a better Drake than Chemtech, but... All right, scary. Looking a bit scary. But yeah. Not too much else going to be found in the outer turret in mid lane. Will that tells the story of this game. Ooh. Peanut hunting for Carrier is now the flash forward from Delight. He's just going to press the R button onto Gumiyushi. And the Weaver's Wall is going to get the flash out. The Equalizer comes down just to slow them down. But oh my god, the damage from these Qs out of Viper Charm is just going to be avoided here by Doran. Who's going to turn it around, gets the flash out from Carrier. And Ona has to leap strike his way out there, running for the hills. And Hummel Life Esports do get control of this dragon. First Infernal the Aatrox against this very squishy composition, especially the Rumble support who has to try to clear vision against Hanwha Life is never what you want to see. Zeus uh, is still going to be able to make it towards his bottom side. Shelly, not going to get punished. Her gold is going to go to the Nether or to the Void, I guess. And Inner Turret is secured on this bottom side, that gold lead ballooning for Hanwha Life, now over 3,000. And Hummer are just moving into their jungle. Okay, there's a seismic shove onto this Rek'Sai. Does try to get on top of Viper, but he's just not low enough. No execution available. Immediate teleport from Doran gets him towards his top side so that there is no cross map play to be had. And man, Hummer Life Esports came to play today. And you can just feel the desperation oh, out of T1. One, one as the Q connecting. Carrier just going to get wiped out by Zekka on his Talia that's starting to become. One keeps stopping you. Your chances get slimmer and slimmer every time you miss them. Oh dear. Peanut finds Ona one more time. Wind Becomes Lightning will not find the mark as the Weaver's Wall 
Left a little to be desired. Is Equalizer going to come down to protect the teleport? Still, Delight just straight up does not care about that one. Peanut also getting taken down relatively low, but that double knockup was too good! And now Faker is having to get out of there. It's not going to work out. Still, it's a fair bit of damage, but it is not enough. They are too strong. Still, into the back line goes Zeus. Zeka able to find a lot of damage onto the Rek'Sai, and he shouldn't be able to get out. Still, those couple of kills onto the bottom lane could be important to try and keep T1 in there. Still, it's going to be the ace, and it should still be the Baron for Hummel Life. I don't think I... It really is what it feels like here. They know that the expiration date has pretty much been and gone on this composition as far as needing oh, to get advantages. Cool, on the top in a turret, it is likely they are just going to be able to take this one. Equalizer does come on through, doesn't do a lot of damage to these minions as they're barrened up. And the flash out from Carrier as... All right, Doran, I'm not sure about this one, but still, he pops the World Ender. He's going to go down, but Carrier should follow suit. Zayus gets back underneath his turret. Faker is just in the side lane, trying to get them whatever bounty gold they can find. And it's working, because the Baron Power play has gone down. Yeah, he is actually staying here as well. Zeka's going to come over to deal with him. Really like the trap they set up there for Doran. Ends up taking him out. Took a long time because Lethality Aatrox is no joke. Uh, they might also be able to find themselves a dragon. Yeah, they might be able to. Now, okay, there's an interruption on Dezaeus. Uh, they're, they're buying time to secure the dragon. And uh, which they are going to be able to do. Yeah, at the cost of their inhibitor turret here, Zeka is also pushing mid. One dragon here, if it was Infernal Soul, you'd feel pretty good about this. It's just really going to feel like Bounty Gold and the threat of an Infernal Soul fight Hanwha Life aren't really concerned about here in trade for Inhibitor Turrets. And a kill on to Zayas, as they're actually just going to get the whole Inhibitor. T1 trying oh. to set up the flank. Yeah, Zekker in trouble. He's going to get charmed up. It's a lot of damage out from Faker as the Flash has to be employed. Still, Hanwha Life Esports are continuing to push. Uh, this, in, this Nexus turret taking down to 50% health. And Weaver's Wall will get Zekker on over. So five members of Hummer Life Esports now in position, but they do want to back away. Kabuyushi does get his shield broken. Hughes are hitting their mark here from Viper, and they'll get themselves a Nexus turret and an inhibitor turret, and the T1 approach. There's rocks on the ground. There is so much poke available here as well. And there is a hook that's going to connect. The charm lands onto Viper. Zayas gets into the back line as well. And Viper is going to be taken out. Delight is extraordinarily low. They take down the Rumble. But T1, this is the best fight they've had so far. And Gumiyushi is still untouched. Doran trying to get some work done, but he goes all the way into the sky. Oh my god. Never you mind. This Aatrox is too big. And he's just jumping all over the top of T1. Uh, he missed a lot, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> He's Lethality Aatrox, and he won't miss the autos. And once he gets on top of Guma, he takes him out there. Great fight for T1, all things considered. They thinned out the wave with the Equalizer. They focus down to light, even with his arm guard there. That's a lot of tunnels for Zayas here. As Doran, he doesn't quite have the longevity in these fights that Zayas has, but he does have a lot of minions yeah. inside the base. And that last Nexus turret here gets very low with Carrier respawning. Even he is going to struggle to clear this one up. Down it goes. Yeah. So now it's just an open Nexus here. On the Light Fans let out a huge cheer. Yeah, he's got the Profane Hydra. The three items that he needed have been completed. Cyrilda's now done as well, as now Hummer Life Esports getting to work on this Baron. My god, it goes down so quickly. The wall is put in the way of T1, and there's nothing they can do about it. I'm alive now with another Baron ready to push down on an exposed Nexus, remember. Faker loses a third of his health bar, just the one arrow. And doesn't find the charm as Delight will find the hook onto the Rek'Sai. Not exactly an optimal target. And now Peanut, he's going in. Equalizer goes down. Crescent God, my god, this damage is disgusting! And I'm alive will just get rid of the bottom lane immediately. The knockup comes in, the prepared seismic shove. And, yeah, that Void Rush not going to be enough to save the Rek'Sai this time. And Hummel Life, a 3-0 over T1 in round two of playoffs. T1 will now have to face off against D-plus Kia in the lower bracket. A very, very decisive and one-sided series.